Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. This is Christina from Pixie Drops Backdrops and I'm here for CompositeCon. I would like to welcome you to one of my most popular backdrops here and very popular with parents, very popular with photographers is these um, hanging floral backdrops and this is definitely one of my best sellers. So I thought I would go through two ways to use this backdrop today. Certainly there are a ton of ways to use it, but I'm going to show you two very popular uses of this backdrop. The first thing that we need to do with any backdrop is to check on which direction the light is coming from before we shoot our subjects or before we choose our subjects. Sometimes you might have something um, in your library that you think you want to play with and you want to give a little something extra to mom. So when I'm taking a look at this backdrop here, first of all, I already know which way the direction of light is coming because I always shoot top and left and and it's just a bit of a habit of mine. Um, so most of my backdrops are lit from top left. However, there are a few little tells um, in this particular backdrop. If you didn't know the light was coming from top and left, you can tell right in here where the shadowing is coming from. And there's some shadowing in here as well. So that would lead me to believe the direction of light is approximately like this. So the most believable composites, it's really important to match up shadowing and direction of light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this particular subject because I shot her with this backdrop in mind. I knew I wanted to use this and this is the most successful way to do a composite is to know that you're going to do the composite before you start. So I knew mom wanted this backdrop and so I just did a very simple shot with this pink layer on a bean bag and a similar tone in the back and so all the color casting will match and this will be a pretty easy blend um, you'll see when we get started here it should only take a few minutes to make this composite look really believable because I pre-planned and the light direction is the same and again the fact that I've used a similar layer and, and texture is really going to work in my benefit. And I wanted to show you another example. This particular young lady, um, she was pretty fussy and so I had also been asked by mom to use this digital backdrop for her, um, but she didn't like to be moved too much. So I was shooting for a different digital here and using this cream tone layer. Um, so I didn't actually get to put the pink underneath her like I had originally planned, but that's not such a big deal. And I'm going to show you when we get to this, uh, you can change the color of this fur and then blend it in to this fur pretty easily. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get started on this little lady. I've already cleaned up the skin a little bit, so you didn't have to uh, sit through that sort of boredom. And I'm just going to go ahead and quick select. This is the quick selection tool. And this is going to allow me to select the subject here. Just click and drag all the areas that we want to keep. I'm adding in fur here because I actually use the fur to blend into the backdrop for a more believable composite. Uh, I took a little too much there. I don't need to get too, too picky with this because like I said, I actually want quite a bit of the fur in there. So I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to add a little bit of fur afterwards. So we go from there. I, I do want this hair. I don't want the hair to look like a helmet. And really the only way that I've come across and I've tried many different strategies over the years is to use the select and mask and then we're going to refine the edge with this tool here, refine edge brush. Now I used to make selections um, with the quick select and refine edge a lot more, um, but in the CC version of Photoshop, it's really not very good. Um, so I, I pretty much only use it for hair and then I'm making the rest of my layer mask um, by hand. 
So what I'm going to do, just to make sure I have these little flyaway hairs, and the little flyaway hairs will actually make it look more realistic as well. So I'm just going to take a little selection around here to try to get the cream tone from under her hair. And it looks like that's done a pretty good job. As you can see here, I've set the feather to 1.1 pixels. Just going to come back in here a little bit and give that a try. And then, really, like I said, I'm only ever using Refine Edge Tool for hair. I'm going to make the rest of the selection uh, adjustments myself by hand. So we've decided that we like the hair here, and I'm going to go ahead and Output to Layer Mask and click OK. And we don't have nearly as much of the selection as I would like, so I'm going to click on my layer mask over here. And then to add to this selection, I have my white palette. And then I'm going to go up to the brush tool. And at 100%, I'm just going to paint back in more of our subject and more of the fur because I want quite a bit of this fur to blend with my backdrop. All right, that looks pretty good there. And the reason that we're using a layer mask um, to select our subject is if we want to, we can make changes later. This is going to stay attached to the original image and even when we pull it in um, to the backdrop, um, we're still able to add and subtract and and um, not make destructive edits to this particular image. So if we want to change something later, we certainly have the ability to do that. I used to um, <laughs> back when I was first learning Photoshop, I used to use the magic eraser tool and um, then I would just erase around the edges and it's quite destructive editing. It it does land you at the same result, um, but if you've made a mistake or you want to change something later, uh, your hands are kind of tied. So that's why using layer mask is the best way, in my humble opinion, to uh, get yourself to a really lovely composite that you have the power to change if need be. So before I talk and talk too long, I'm going to grab our subject here just with the arrow tool and lift her over and drop her into the backdrop. So as you can see here, there is a little bit of a rough edge on her back and that's not a problem. We can make changes to that once we get, get her sized into this backdrop. So She's a little bit too big for this. I'm going to hit Control T to resize, and then I'm going to grab the top corner, hold down the Shift key to make sure that her aspect ratio stays the same so she doesn't look all wonky. And then I'm going to move her into the backdrop and hold Shift again. And then I'm going to come down here and just rotate her a bit make sure she fits in as seamlessly as possible. I'm liking that size and I'm liking the placement. So I'm going to go ahead and click the check mark. So we've gotten to the blending portion of this composite. We're going to come back over to our layer mask that we brought with us from the original image. And what I like to do, and this is my personal um, habit, I've developed this over, over the years, and I'm not saying this is the only way or the right way, but it is definitely my way. This is the way that I like to blend backdrops. I know some people will make a very perfect outline of the subject and um, not leave any of, of whatever they were using for, for a fur layer or for... Um, for a backdrop cover on, on a bean bag, but I like to do it um, to blend them together. So the best way that I've found to do this is to take your pen brush and we're going to erase off some of this fur layer and then we're going to blend it into the fur layer that's in the backdrop. 
And what we want to do is just make a believable blend so that it looks like she's on the fur in the backdrop to begin with. So I'm going to bring down my opacity and my flow to about 35%. I'm at 36%. All right, we've got 35% on both here. And I'm going to just size my brush down. And I'm using the uh, left bracket hotkey. This is a great tip um, just to make the size of my brush smaller. All right, and I also think that one of the things that makes compositing super duper easy is the... Um, Wacom pen and tablet. I would not do composites or skin editing or, or really any editing now without it. It's become a real staple for me and that's what I'm using here instead of my mouse and cursor. I'm actually using a pen and tablet. So if you hear some scratching that's what it will be. So what I like to do is just massage in a little bit at a time. It's a bit tedious but really it doesn't take all that long and a little bit and a little bit just creep into the backdrop fur and you can see here in very little time we're getting close to a believable composite already it, it really doesn't take much time if you plan ahead um, your editing time is going to be next to nothing and that's really the key to doing uh, compositing, is planning ahead so you know what you're shooting for. It doesn't mean that you cannot go back and use an image that you've already taken. You certainly can do that. But if you want to cut down your editing time, that's just a little trick. And I'm just going to turn up the, um, the pen here quite a bit so I can get to this leaf. And that's the other thing I find makes a composite really believable, especially with flowers. If you hide your subject layer enough to bring out the backdrop layer so that part of the backdrop comes in front of the subject, then it really looks like your subject is actually sitting in your backdrop. So I'm just making sure that these plants show up and and they're just a little bit in front of baby's foot, which is really, really lovely as far as creating some depth and uh, making lo it look a little more believable. And then I'm just blending on the back here. And this tends to be quite a giveaway too um, with compositing, especially babies, newborns. Um, is this blend on the back end. So just again, I like to sneak in a little bit at a time, blend it just ever so slightly so that you have that believable shadowing showing up because you would. I mean, there's always going to be a shadow falling off of their back end if your light source is coming from this direction. So blend, 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 leaving the original shadowing and I'm pretty happy with that for the moment. I might play with this area and darken it up a tiny bit before we call this finished. Okay, so I'm using the X key to swap over to the white layer mask. And I'm just going to paint off that little bit of fur that popped out. from the backdrop layer. This is me just being picky. There's fur in, in both the baby layer and the backdrop layer, so it would have been more than believable for me to leave it there. And I'm not super thrilled with this bit of hair right here, so I'm going to mask that off as well. So hit the X key to head back to the black. And I'm going to go ahead and just mask that out come right up to 100% here, get a bit of a sharper edge. And I think I went a little bit too far there, so I'm going to swap back using the X key 
and left bracket to bring my brush down and paint some of it back. Lovely. Okay, so we're going to zoom right in here. We're going to hit the Z or Z key and then click and pull in nice and tight so that we can see exactly what we're working with on the back end here. Go back to the layer mask and I need to use the white color to paint back some of these missing pixels on her back end. Just a little bit at a time, massaging it ever so slightly. And this is going to leave a very believable blend because the other thing that is really important when you're shooting for a composite is to shoot with a similar aperture. And I tend to shoot my backdrops for sale at about um, 5 or 5.6. And so I, again, I knew that and I do provide this information on um, my backdrop site. I, I do recommend shooting baby at 5 or 5.6 so that you have a, a believable, oops, got to go back here, a believable blend between the two because they have, they're shot at a similar aperture. Okay, so back to white and we're just going to slowly add back. So I'm really happy with the blend right here, but we've got a bit of um, pink showing up there. So just, again, a little bit at a time. Patience is everything when it comes to a composite. I'm going to head back to the black and just fade that in ever so gently. And this is why I really couldn't recommend the tablet, pen and tablet, more, because this kind of stuff feels just like coloring when you were a little kid rather than trying to finesse it with a mouse can be difficult, hard on your wrist, etc. And I can see that there's a little bit here, um, part of her bum that, that needs to be there, so I'm going to hit X again, go back to white to reveal that, just ever so gently. All right, I'm going to hit the Z key again and push left to zoom out. And as you can see, this is a really believable composite al already. And as I said, you know, it's a really good idea to make sure some of the elements in the backdrop itself poke forward and then it really makes it look like she's in there. Um, the only thing that's sort of popping out to me is right in here the focus here and the focus here don't match and this needs to be a little bit darker so I'm going to solve this I'm going to solve the brightness issue first so I'm going to go to the background layer and I'm going to add a curves layer and then I'm going to go ahead and just pull the curve down And we've changed the entire backdrop image, which that's okay. We need to actually just click on the white and control I, and that will hide it all. And then I'm going to paint in on the part that I needed. So right bracket just to make my brush bigger. And we're going to paint that in, darken it up a little bit. Hey, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's make my brush a bit smaller here. Okay, now I think the only refining I'm going to do here, because I am pretty happy with this, is I'm just going to blur this a bit. And there are a couple of ways to go about this, but I think the absolute simplest way, especially for something so small here, is just to use the blur tool. And come on over, make sure you're on the background layer and just blur it a little bit until it matches the other fur. 
All right. I think we're looking pretty good there. Excellent. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what I would do if I didn't have that matching pink layer. Because let's face it, sometimes things go sideways in a newborn session and you just don't get to where you want to go. Or you might just have an image in your library that you want to use and try out. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to select, let me hide these two layers, and I'm going to select a color in this fur layer. Maybe a bright part of the fur. Right about there, okay. And I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to add in, sorry, back it up, add in a solid color. And obviously we don't want the color covering the entire image. So come back over here, control I to switch it over, to hide it all. And then we're gonna go to hue as a blend mode. Hue is the blend mode. And we're going to go over here, switch over push X to switch over to white. And I'm going to go ahead and make this brush a bit bigger. And then we're going to paint on this solid color layer to change the color of this fur to more of a pink tone. It doesn't have to match perfectly because we are blending it with the backdrop itself. So don't worry about if it matches absolutely perfectly or not, which as you can see, it does not. I find this is always such a guessing game and it's a bit frustrating for me, Photoshop, but I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks here. We don't need to be perfect with this. We're just going to change out this fur. And that tone is quite a bit more vibrant than what we have in the backdrop. So I'm going to just bring the opacity down. And that is much more muted and closer to what we were after. Let me bring it back up a tiny bit. All right, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and flatten this image. Again, this is something that may not be recommended, but something that I do tend to do, and I'm just teaching you my workflow here. So I went ahead and flattened the image and I'm going to do a quick select here again. And I don't mind if the selection tool keeps all of the fur in here. It doesn't really matter to me. As I told you before, I'm always just after the hair when it comes to this tool. So select and mask. And then I'm just going to refine the hair edge and then again output to layer mask and there we go and again I'm not super thrilled with the selection that's happened here but I'm not married to it because I've used a layer mask and so I can add back whatever I need when we get her into the backdrop. So again, I'm just going to grab her layer and bring her on over and pop her into the backdrop. Control T and hold the corner with the shift key to make sure her aspect ratio stays the same. So you'll notice that I don't have quite as perfect a pose with this subject either. And I'm going to show you how to change that because I think this happens, well, it happens to me more often than I'd like to admit. And there's this really cool tool <coughs> here in Photoshop that I really like. 
and it is called the Puppet Warp. So I'm going to go ahead and what you do is you place these tack, this little tack here, on the point where you want everything to, s to pivot from. So I don't want this to move. So I'm just going to make selections all along here. These parts I don't want moved. And they're going to stay still. And then what I want is more of that bum up pose and a little bit more curled. So I'm going to grab a point right on her hind end here and it's going to pivot along this line and that will give me more of that curved shape so that she fits better into this backdrop. Just like that. I'm going to hit check mark. And just like that she's going to fit just that much better into this background. Just going to rotate her a little bit. Again, we don't always get the most ideal poses to work with, but mom really wanted this backdrop, so I'm going to make it happen for her. Just going to tuck baby in here. So we might lose a little bit more of the leg trying to get baby down to the level of the backdrop, and that's okay. I'm just going to size her down a bit. Her head's a bit big here. And you can see we've got some jagged edges here that we're going to clean up once we get this blend done here. So we're going to go over to the layer mode. These other two that you see here are from the first subject that we were working on, so that's why I've got them hidden. We're on to our new subject now, so we're going to zoom in and go ahead and grab the brush tool. Turn it down quite a ways for this initial part. And I'm going to make it a bit smaller here. Left bracket key. Grab my tablet. Oh, switch over to black to hide. Hide our top layer. And just start blending in and see, see what we reveal behind here. We might, I might like this a lot more once I get these layers blended together. The pose might not bother me so much. I'm liking that blend. Again, just massaging it, coming back over and back over. That's the beauty of having this brush set low opacity, low flow, is that it gives me an opportunity to just gently come in there. So I'm not sure if you've noticed what's happened here, but we do not have background right here because of the pose that we've got. Um, this backdrop is quite curved and baby didn't want much to do with that. And I think you can only use Puppet Warp uh, so much before it doesn't look realistic anymore. So this is the other reason why I'm really thrilled that we've changed the color of our background layer, our fur layer, and we can just use the original fur layer. We're going to reveal it more here. And we're going to build up that fur layer that way. And there we go. All right hit the X to hide this business here. I'm going to turn up this brush, make this go a little bit faster. But as I said before, just take your time. Not rushing, making sure you get the most believable result. Adding in these little palm fronds, 
so that it looks like they're in front of her. Being careful on the blend at the back here because we do, do need the shadow off of her bum. And I think we'll do the very same thing in this area as we did the last time. And we're just going to darken that down a little bit and go ahead and uh, blur it out a little bit too. Before we do that, we're going to add the pixels in the back here because they're a bit of a mess. So Z to zoom in, push right with the tool to come in nice and close so you can see what you're doing. Hit X to flip this around. And we're going to go ahead and reveal the missing pixels along the edge here. I don't think I'll be all the way at 100%, but we're going to be, yeah, around 85, 86. That's all right. And that just gives me an opportunity to, again, massage in the pixels that we're missing. I might come right up. Hit the X. We've come across the backdrop here, so we're just going to smooth that out. Beauty. And back to white so we can reveal what's under here. I'm not loving the way this fabric looks, so I might push that with a liquify tool, or I can come in and clone it to make it a bit more smooth. But I'm not going to worry about that right at this moment. I was more interested in showing you this blend here to make a very believable blended layer. All right. So to move over without um, grabbing your mouse, if you're using your pen and um, tablet, you hit the space bar and then just move your pen and that you can move around into in the frame there. So back over to the layer and X to get the black so I can hide this. I can cheat this and instead of cloning I'll just come along here and hide these pixels and that's fine too. However you get to the result uh, is totally up to you. You'll develop your own style just the way that I've developed my own style. It's always really fun for me to watch other artists and see the way that they do things because there's a thousand and one ways to come up with the same thing in Photoshop. It's a beautiful program. Takes a long time to uh, finesse it, but I absolutely love Photoshop. All right, I think the only way to make this a little more believable right here is to darken this down a bit. We're going to go ahead and add a curves layer, but we're going to invert it so control I so that it doesn't affect the entire backdrop. And then I'm going to go ahead and paint it in there. I'm liking that got away from me a little bit so just flip it over and remove it from here and then I'm just going to blur that out again with the blur tool so that it matches our backdrop I might blur down in here too since we've blended this and, and actually used some of the fur from the original image 
And this is looking pretty hard along the back here, so I think I'm going to soften that up a bit. Because it just doesn't look super duper believable to me. It's a little too rough, and I might pull this up a little bit. So in order to do that, I'm going to come into the girl layer, and I'm going to go into liquify. And we're just going to liquify this fabric. We're going to move it up. There you go. Change a little bit the shape here. This is the push tool in, in uh, liquify. If you want to move things around, move fabric especially is really easy with the push tool and I like that so I'm going to come out of there let's have a look go to their history here oh yes that's much more believable let's come in here see what's going on here had some things show up so I'm going to go ahead and hide those with the black brush Okay, so I think what's really bothering me here is just a little bit darker than what's going on in the background here. So again, I'm going to bring the opacity down quite a ways, down to say 25%. And I'm going to massage in here until that sort of dark edge blends with the background. Again, there I'm sure are people having an opinion about this one <laughs> but this is the way that I do things and and it does work for me hundred ways to skin a cat that's the expression uh, let's bring this up a bit and bring all the flow down to we're just gonna edge in here ever so gently and blend in with with the backdrop so it's not such a stark color change considering I was on the wrong color okay just using the black to hide some of that harsh edge it's gonna bring this brush down a little bit and same with this here this is a pretty rough edge I'm just gonna blend it out Alright, and maybe I th what we'll do here is just add a bit of brightness to baby. So we'll add a curves layer. And we're going to go ahead and brighten up the entire layer that has baby on it. So in order to do that, you're grabbing in, in the top quadrant and just pull ever so slightly up. And because I haven't clipped it to the background, everything's brightening up. Well, I'm glad that happened because now you can see why you need to clip it. So I'm going to clip this mask just to baby. And now we can zoom and see, like, do we like that better? All right, we're going to turn that off. Pretty dark. I think she was too dark. This might be too bright. So we can come in and just bring it down a little bit all right how do we feel about that that's much better
this is still bothering me over here so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna paint it all the way out a really small brush and we're gonna go ahead and just get rid of this right here because it's catching my eye more than I would like and it doesn't really add to the image much better all right and there is our second finished image I am very pleased to have had you here for this tutorial and if you have any questions please feel free to ask